We are now going to look into short circuit. If we short circuit the distribution, then there is a risk that a whole frequency converter will trip over current and then all the consumers will lose its power. Um, we rather should want some of the fuses in the distribution system to trip and we want the drive to continue running supplying the other di consumers. Now we have the short circuit current cutter disabled by writing 800 here. Let's see how the system reacts. It will probably be tripping with a fault F1 over current and not blowing any fuses. It will just trip and stop. Let's see. Everything stopped, the drive went into a fault and the alarm displaying is... We got a fault code F91 that says that there is a short circuit detected in the system and that the short circuit was present longer time than the timeout period. Can we do something more intelligent about this? Yes. We can activate a current cutter and the current cutter will detect this short circuit and it will limit the current just to blow the fuses. These fuses have unknown characteristics. What current and what time it takes to trip them. The frequency converter have a current limit for short circuit. In the tables for this product, I will find that some 85 ampere is possible to supply during a very, very short time during a short circuit. What happens if the short circuit brings the current a lot higher? Well, if it reaches the hardware level, there will be hardware circuits in a frequency converter cutting off the IGBTs and tripping, stopping the frequency converter. It stops totally and the grid we supplied is dead. You have a blackout of this ship. You maybe don't want that because selectivity should be a much better way to solve this. We want the fuse for only the short-circuited consumer to trip. How can we ensure that the current doesn't go up in this level and you get a hardware trip and the whole thing stops? Well, we have a functionality in our drive which detects the short circuit. The very rapid rise of current will be detected. And what happens? It cuts off the control system for the IGBTs. It just cuts off the current. And this happen at a certain decided level. We can decide what level this should happen. And it should be with a safety margin to the hardware trip, of course. The current will drop to zero. Then a current controller will take the current up to a decided level here. We can decide to go up to the current short circuit level. And we can sit there for a defined period of time. It could be two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Depend a little bit on the performance of the drive, what type of drive it is. Then we know that we have a known current for a known amount of time. When we compare that to the characteristic of the fuse, we will find if we are able to trip this fuse within this performance, this current and this time. Hopefully, we will trip the fuse and everything go back to normal and the frequency converter will continue supplying the current to the other consumers and everybody is happy except for maybe the cook in the galley which have a short-circuited uh, microwave oven or whatever and only the fuse in the galley were blown and not blacking out the whole ship. In the microgrid manual, the description for how to set the short circuit current levels, how to calculate it, 
is quite well described here. The parameters for the short circuit and the current cutter is set here. Limit settings. The fault is 800. And we calculated that this drive is 375. It's quite strong for short circuit. How long time should we keep the short circuit to blow the fuses? I know that this will take at least five seconds. So this is 5,000 milliseconds. Let's try that. And the fuse is going to break instead. We still have a short circuit and the drive is running okay so all the other distributors have got their power and the fuse for only this one are broken and we can see that the drive have put out a current just to blow the fuse. If we take a look at what happened when we had a short circuit, here we saw the small current 1.2 ampere going on and suddenly you have a peak, which was the short circuit. Then the current dropped and then the current controller came back in, ramping up the current to blow the fuse. It took about 30 and, um, 31 amperes and this went on for about one, two, well, two, almost three seconds, two and a half seconds it took to blow the fuse. What happened with the voltage during this? Here we can see that the voltage dropped a little bit when there was the short circuit. Uh, the current was cut off. The voltage came up, probably just reactive current into the system then and then it starts feeding into the short circuit the voltage drops down a little bit when the current go up and the moment that the hardware fuse trips the voltage come back online the grid what happened with the frequency when this happened here we can see the frequency is 501 and it doesn't drop here the moment before the current cutter established it comes back into 49.42 hertz keeps the frequency up during the current cutter operation there is a small drop here in when the transition from current cutter to back to normal operation and here we got back to normal operation so for the user it looks like this this is how the ship will see a short circuit now here everything is running nicely and suddenly boom the voltage drops a little bit the frequency drops a little bit something is going on bam it blows the fuse bam everything back normal we are running a consumer there is a short circuit and the short circuit is detected by the drive which limit the current here it cuts off the current goes down to zero then a current controller take the current up to this level blow the fuse then re-establish the grid and all the other consumers should be good the fuse that we just tripped is this one it's a 13 ampere B characteristics and what happened was that with our drive we created a current a controlled current that was above this curve it can sit continuously with 13 amperes and it can sustain some high current for a very short time but we kept the current going for enough time and high enough current for it to trip so this is how to calculate the selectivity. You need to sustain the current high enough, long enough to stay above this curve and it will trip. So this is selectivity with a frequency converter, which is a huge difference when you use a frequency converter with motor control for supplying a grid. 
if you use a regular motor control for supplying a grid like a shore power then you don't have this functionality and at best you will trip the drive and you will stop from supplying voltage but you could also have the possibility that, that you sit there feeding into a short circuit because it's undefined what's happening with the fuses and the selectivity in the system. So this is one of the reasons you should use a grid converter when supplying a distribution system. There is selectivity. You can predict how it behaves when there is a short circuit in the system. Thank you for watching and the next uh, training session will be a more advanced function on the grid. We will look at how we connect it to the power management to our ship and how to use it for a peak shaver on our ship. Thank you.